Hey everybody, can you see me? It's just after 4 a.m. here and I'm heading into the old shack. Come on, let's go. My cup of coffee made it that far, so I'm gonna come back after that. Let's see what it looks like. Ooh, better turn on the light. All right. I have a lot of fun in here. Okay, now I still got that, uh, a couple of these to do here, and I got this snuck down, and I'm gonna stick the, uh, if I can fit it in, uh, I'm sure I can, uh, the coax indicator <laughs> and see if I can indicate that in a little bit faster. Now bear with me. I'm just getting used to this now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. I got uh, some other interesting things to kind of get into uh, uh, about machinery in general and just kind of kicking things around. That'll be fun. Okay, I'll be Hey there. You know, the old jig board's a lot easier to use than a milling machine for one reason is the table moves, see? But the hand wheels always stay there. And see the table moves on the top there? It moves on top of the base. And then you got a spindle housing that drops down. That's your uh, elevation. And it's a little tougher on an old milling machine. Uh, so I got this. Uh, <laughs> see my attempts at using. Where, where, where is it here? The end of column. Well, I had to use it because this is uh, the cheap version. <laughs> I think I bought it from Inco, Inco probably in the 1980s. And these bushings were plastic of such quality that they crumbled away in the last I don't know, a couple of decades. So I made some replacements out of brass on the Axelson using uh, the blade saw. Uh, a turret, a, a tailstock turret. Works really good. So, okay. So, uh, this is uh, maybe handy. I don't know. So, <laughs> this time I've got the coax indicator in there. Okay. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, Graydon was asking about this. Uh, uh, it's a three quarter inch. Uh, Roughing in mill uh, Well, this is something I pulled out of the junkyard over there out of one of those bins of chips And I just keep cutting it back and sharpening it on the uh, tool and cutter grinder I've probably been doing that for 15 years But it's kind of nice, you know, I mean it was long, you know, it was like long and it was cooked that much So I took and cut it off and sharpened it and what you see here is it's what it's, what's left. It's kind of like a cigar getting smoked down. But if you if you got a tool and cutter grinder, see you can uh, cut uh, grind those ends uh, very easily, and you can sharpen the flutes too. Uh, the air fixture makes it easier, but uh, you get into an end mill this size, I find it no problem uh, using the regular work head with a support finger. So that's what that is. And this, this milling machine here is a wartime machine. And uh, it's uh, kind of an interesting machine. It's uh, the body part is uh, a milling machine that came out in the early 1930s. This part here. And for the war effort, they added, uh, and it had all mechanical, oh, gear drives to the knees. So for the war effort, they adapted the uh, motorized knee they had on their mills, such as, uh, I think they call it a number two light, has the same knee, and a bunch of other mills have this uh, brown sharp uh, knee. But uh, this uh, 
earlier style mill is considerably heavier. I think the uh, light mills were uh, just under 4,000 pounds, number two light. This one here is the number two, they call it a plain standard, that weighs 5,000 pounds without this vertical head attachment. And this vertical head, it, it's a sliding attachment, and it was never cataloged. And um, it'll have the number here, number 10, but all of their uh, vertical attachments will say number 10 on it. This one's got a uh, quill feet, two inches of quill feet. And uh, since it's a war effort machine, the spindle's soft. So it's got a soft steel spindle, and somebody spun a holder in it. And in some very early videos, I did, I took a scraper, an internal bearing scraper, and cleaned that up using the undamaged areas that were originally machined into this. And this was machined, it wasn't ground. So I scraped it to hold, these are uh, 40 holders. There's no drive ears. This, uh, it, it's light duty, see? I'm not gonna overload it. Um, it's got some real disadvantages. Af after this, it's got advantages and big disadvantages. Um, after this, they replaced this with what's called the number 20 range master sliding head mill where they put the whole motor works up high and had it slide. See, this uh, head slides out on the normal uh, oval arms driven by that spline. This will slide out a foot. Then you can put a coupler on it and actually slide it way out and point it back at the machine. Very odd machine. Uh, the, uh, you can see here, it conforms to uh, the war board for uh, finish and stuff. The spindle RPMs, you know, this is really interesting. The only two uh, RPMs that agree with each other is 1200 and the lowest speed, uh, which is pretty low. But these other ones uh, kind of fit in in a couple places, but it's got two more speeds <laughs> as shown here. So this is truly a war effort machine. You know, it's got the old selector instead of the dial type. They came out before the war. So this is a war effort machine and it makes it really easy. This is it here. If you can see that, I haven't done much restoration to that uh, flat, but it's a number 2B uh, plain standard. So that's what this is, and uh, I'm going to get, uh, let's get this on, uh, you've seen me struggle <laughs> with that indicol, trying to dial in the same part, and I got this um, coax on here, and a lot of people don't like these, and I never really liked them, but uh, the, uh, um, the thing actually works pretty good on this awkward machine. So let's, I'm going to fire it up. Now, let's see if I can loosen this a little bit. Now to start this machine, you got this lever up here, see? And when you lift it up, it starts it. When you, there's neutral, pull it all the way down, you got a break. Okay, then you can hold it and, uh, Loosen tools and things. Okay, so let's start it up and let it uh, oil a little bit. I think I gotta get lower here. Okay, I'm gonna work the. Uh, I don't. You know, I think I should maybe run a little bit faster. I had to fiddle with it to squeeze in there and I got the knee all the way down. So I'll work the uh, Y axis a little bit. That seemed to make it better. Work the uh, X axis. That makes it worse. Better. I'm going to try the Y again. A little bit on that X. Uh-oh. 
Getting close, huh? I made it worse. Back it off. This thing's actually pretty accurate, I think. I'm going to work the Y a little bit more. Is it on in there? You know, that might be about as good as it's going to get. <laughs> well, look at that. That's a lot easier than using this. What? <laughs> That's really easy. I don't know if I get it any better than that. No, that's worse on the what on the X. You know, I think I better call it good. Okay, I'll be back here. You can call me old-fashioned, but this is the heart of my shop, right here. A tool and cutter grinder, watch me transform this machine right before your very eyes. I was grinding some uh, lead bits here with this vise, and I'm going to disconnect my vacuum cleaner. i got to use some vacuum with uh, carbide, and the reason is It'll like look kill you. Carbide, you can smell it. And if you can smell it, you're breathing it, it's bad. I got this uh, antique filter clean vacuum cleaner that works really good. But I'm grinding limited amount of carbide. Just, just the tools I need, I'm not doing it commercial. If I was doing it commercially, I would put like a restaurant hood over this, like you would have over a, a commercial uh, fryer, you know, with makeup, hair, and everything, and I would take all that stuff out. That's the only way to really do it, what I say. Make it safe. <sighs> really hot out, so I got my snowman coffee cup. Okay, now I'm gonna loosen this and rotate this around. Yeah, clunk myself in the head with this work light you now. Rotate it just like that and put it right at 90. Just like that. Now, this is an old uh, Nix tool post that the blade gave me. It's a copy of a uh, KDK. And see, I've got uh, a vise on this end here and the ER32 uh, call it chuck on this end so I can grab things round and uh, shape, square. So I'm going to set this over here, we'll hold it over, and then I'm going to install this. I hope I got that down. Got it down high. All right. Okay, crank that on in, move the table over. Now I gotta lift that head up. Yeah, just like that. Now I've got a really nice grinder for hand shaping with a big selection of wheels. Okay, thought I'd show you that. Having this uh, cutter grinder in such uh, pro close proximity to like a, a Monarch 10 double E and a, and a jig board over there is a necessary evil. And what I do, the, the Monarch 10 double E, I've got a canvas tarp I throw over it. But all of the machines, because I have this grinder here to maintain the tools, and it's got to be at hand. So I can make a rapid uh, adjustment for sharpness, radius, you know, size, anything. Um, is before I move anything, I wipe the ways down wipe everything down, absolutely everything. And uh, because that grinding dust gets everywhere. Yeah, 
So I thought I'd point that out. And uh, yeah, this is a nice prize here for me, you know, for my retirement. Uh, being able to keep this uh, Monarch 10 E wave, you know, a lot of people work their entire life and this is what they end up with. Oh well, I'll be back. <laughs>